Welcome to Tech with Zamir. In this video, we are going to learn how to execute SQL statements in Azure Data Factory, which are saved in a file on blob storage. So this can be also true when you have saved multiple uh, uh, SQL statements in some table and uh, you would like to read them and uh, would like to execute them in Azure Data Factory. So Azure Data Factory does not have any built-in uh, uh, activity that can be used uh, straightforward saying, hey, I want to run some uh, SQL statement and it can take it and uh, use it. But there are some workarounds. Uh, so I'm going to show you all those uh, details. So first of all, we uh, need to look, take a look where our SQL statements are saved. Um, so let's go to the uh, Azure Blob Storage and here, uh, let me take you actually to the home first and then you can uh, go to the container. So here is my Blob Storage. If I click right there, then I go to the containers and in the container, I have input container and here is my SQL statements. So I just uh, created a few of the SQL statements such as insert into customer table. Then I have another one, you know, insert into customer table. Then I have a few of them where I'm inserting the data into the product table. And at the end, actually, I'm creating one table called the DBOMR. So each statement is one liner. You can see right there. So there is no uh, header on top of it. Uh, you can create a header if you like, uh, but in my case, there is no header. So that's fine. And uh, that's uh, all we have here. What we are going to do, we are going to read this file that's sitting on our blob storage and then uh, loop through all of these uh, uh, SQL statements one after one uh, and execute in our Azure Data Factory. So let's go create a pipeline. Now, here's uh, my uh, actually, I want to show you one more thing before I go to the creating pipeline. Here is my SQL database. So this has two tables and uh, there is customer table, there is product table and uh, I have truncated uh, both of them. So there is no data in these uh, two tables. But once we run our queries in from the file, they should be having some data. Okay, so let me change to the select query. Okay, if we execute right now, we can see there should be no data here, okay? That sounds good. Now we go to the Azure Data Factory here. I'm gonna go to the author and then I'm going to create a new pipeline. Um, pipeline. And first of all, I need to read this file. Uh, I will be using lookup uh, to read this file. And the uh, lookup activity, go to the settings and here I'm gonna create a new data set. Uh, I will be using uh, Azure Blob Storage and uh, then click right there. And here I will be saying CSV file. So right there and then I can give the name uh, read SQL file okay and uh, create a new linked service so it is already there but I was just want to create it because some people are new and they would like to see how the linked services service linked service is created so here uh, you accept your uh, Azure subscription and uh, then you have a storage account you want to give some name to it so fine uh, just uh, give LNK at the end uh, so Azure blob link service. So uh, test connection, create. And uh, now we will navigate to our container and select the file. So yeah, there is no first row as a header. So I, mean, I can't click right there. Okay. So but if you have it, it's good to have it. And then you can uh, work accordingly. Hit OK. And there are certain things I would like to make a few changes here because uh, this file is uh, a common delimited file and uh, it will be accepting commas and it will be breaking uh, the different uh, values into multiple columns uh, that I don't want in. You know? Okay, so that's uh, one of the issue uh, we could have it. So I'm gonna go to the open here and here instead of a comma delimited, I'm gonna put pipe uh, because I do not have any pipe sign inside those SQL statements. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this one. You can use tab delimited if you want, you know, so uh, whatever works for you. If I use comma, that's a problem because I have many values in the insert statements that ends with the comma. So each column is start and end with the commas, right? So I'm going to go with the pipe here. So in this way, I will be able to read the, the whole uh, row in one. Okay, that's good. And now what we will do here is ready and uh, we should uh, get the for each loop. Once the values are read and one more thing actually, first row only no, I would like to read all the rows. And here I will get for each loop. From the for each loop, I'm gonna to connect to my lookup, click right there, and go to settings, do it sequential. I have seen this error, because once you do parallel, there could be maybe table create, table insert, and all that, so you would like to go one after one. And here in the items, what you're gonna do, you're gonna to go to the add dynamic contents here, and then use a lookup data output. 
So here, uh, let's uh, see what we have there. First of all, I'm gonna leave this, uh, actually, sorry. Let's do lookup dot value, okay? So we would like to get the values from the output. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put a uh, weird activity here. So, and then we will uh, execute our pipeline. Uh, because without uh, any activity inside the for each loop, it will always give you error. Like, hey, I need to have an activity in the for each loop. So we are waiting. And I want to show you a few things and then we will move forward with our final activity that will execute our SQL script. So from the lookup, you can see right there, we read this output dot value. And in the value, you have this prop prop underscore zero one. So if I would have a column, header column, that it will be here, like such as name or query or whatever. But in my case, I don't have it. So it gave this name prop. Okay, so that's fine. I can use that one. And here, all those statements are written right there. So that's good. And uh, what we are going to do here, you can see right there in the for each, you know, you can have seven items. So there are seven rows. And then the wait activity is nothing there because I just put it there. So it is going to execute one after one. So let's go back to the activities again. Delete the wait activity and now we will bring lookup again. As I said that there is no built-in uh, activity that can execute SQL statements. So that's a shame. Honestly, like uh, we are, we will be needing a lot of places where we will be uh, running those SQL queries, but it make it more difficult. In SSIS, if you've been uh, uh, using it, there is execute SQL task uh, that can do a lot of uh, um, execution such as store procedures, such as uh, SQL statements, and uh, it helps a lot in the development. But anyways, maybe one day we will have some activity, but right now we don't. So we are going to work with some other workarounds. So go to settings here and we can select a data set here. If you guys remember that, I use a lookup here to read the data from the flat file. Also, the lookup can be used to read the data from different sources. So in this case, I'm going to make connection to the Azure SQL DB. So as the lookup is used to read the data, we are going to trick that a little bit and put multiple statements. So, so first statement is going to be actual the execute part of it. And then the second part is going to be select statement. I will put just to trick this lookup statement. So what we are going to do here, we are going to go to new Azure SQL DB new and here we will create a new linked service so we'll go and uh, select a subscription select our sql server select our database name authentication and provide the password and uh, we can say something if you want to change the link service name but it's okay just let it be create our link service is created uh, i'm not going to select any table on all that because i need to run those uh, sql statements um, so i'm going to play with that go to the query here and then uh, here we will be writing that query if you guys remember that uh, we have to so we, the values are coming from the for each loop and we have to pass that values here so add dynamic contents here and uh, now what we will do we will do at the rate concat and uh, first uh, we will provide that value so inside that for each loop dot item so I'm going to do uh, dot prop prop underscore zero. Okay, so that's our item, right? So once uh, that's done, what we would like to do next, uh, we would like to add some uh, extra statement, uh, select one as the output. Okay, so that's nothing. Uh, so lookup is uh, going to do th two things. So it's going to run this statement first. Uh, that's coming from the for each loop. Uh, and for each loop is getting that value from uh, that file uh, uh, that we used uh, in the blob storage. So our first lookup read those uh, list of uh, insert statements, update, delete, and all the statements. Then pass to the for each loop. And then we use another lookup. Uh, and uh, that's where the statement is right here. So first that statement will run, then this will keep running after that. And then the next statement come in third and fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh. That's how it will keep executing. I will show you this if I want to show you right here. Maybe we'll have some errors, but we will show you. So this is how it is. So item dot prop. Remember that I don't have column header and all that. That's why it's a prop underscore zero one. If you have a column name in the, your uh, file, then you might have SQL query name or something like that. That's uh, how it is. So we are all good here. Hit OK. And now we debug. So I'm expecting this uh, lookup to read all the file. In the um, in file, there are seven rows that are different to SQL statements, then pass to the for each loop. And inside the for each loop, uh, I am expecting that uh, lookup uh, to run each of the statement. Uh, looks like it's running successful. So we are lucky here. Let's uh, 
go right there. So it is running one at a time. So that's what we want. Uh, so I put as a sequential because I don't want it to run as a parallel because uh, there could be tables they could get locked or at the same time we are doing DDL, like creating table and inserting statements. So, so I don't want to do that. Um, so I executed successfully. So first of all, look up got these all guys. So each row it is there. Then uh, for each loop, it is bringing that like to total seven rows or insert statement and update and all that. Here's the lookup. So see the value that output and count. Sorry. So yeah. So what we are gonna do here? Uh, we are gonna go back to our tables. First of all, execute this statement and see what we have here. Okay, so we can see that uh, uh, let's, uh, this is our this is our product table. So let me run the customer first, and uh, we should get some values. So one, two, three, four, five. See, this all values are there. And if you guys remember that I tricked uh, or I uh, by purpose I made some uh, changes in the script. So if you see right there, this is inserting two rows, ID and uh, the name of it, and the next one is only inserting. Uh, the ID. So I just want to show you our SQL statements of different types can be working. That's fine. So you can go back here and if you see right there you can see this is last record. If I go and execute this product table now and we should see two records. So we have one computer, 1000 my broken car. See right there my broken car. So that's worked. And uh, then finally, we should have created a table because uh, there is a create table statement. Uh, so I'm going to go back here and then I'm going to refresh. And let's see if there is a record uh, or there is a table called Amir. Okay, so we are lucky here. The table has been created. Uh, so look at this. Uh, so this should have two columns, ID and name. Uh, so this is not a fancy table. Just a uh, table for the test. Uh, so ID, name and address uh, the same way what we have here in our file. So this is how you will uh, execute the SQL statements uh, in uh, Azure Data Factory. Not that great. I mean, uh, you know, it will be nice uh, if you could have uh, a SQL uh, execute SQL activity and just uh, pass these values and get it done. But we know that how to work uh, through when the challenges come and how to make the things work. So thank you very much. And I hope uh, this uh, tip will help you to create uh, pipelines and uh, make the things work for you. I appreciate your time with me. Please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in the next video.